Well, hey, hey, guys, welcome to the studio today. Part two in our adventure, trying to figure out whether the type of wood makes any difference at all in an electric guitar. Today, we went to an audiologist's lab. Dr. Nicole Anzalone allowed us to use the highest tech equipment I've ever seen for testing under laboratory conditions, and she walked us through the tests on a variety of species of woods. Let's get to it. Now, Dr. Nicole is a local drummer, musician. She's very good at what she does, and I had a few questions for her. Hi, my name is Dr. Nicole Anzalone. I'm a doctor of audiology. I own a practice in Fayetteville and Camillus in New York, and I started learning neuroscience. So I have my master's in neuroscience from Syracuse University and a doctorate in audiology also from Syracuse University and I graduated in 2007, and I just love the science of sound. And you're a drummer. Yes, and I'm a drummer, too. And it sounds like a little bit of a contradiction, but I, I do protect my hearing. In part three of our experiment, we are going to convert these wood planks into guitars with a string and a pickup and through an amp and see how it behaves under those circumstances. But today our question was, what does the wood do if you apply a pure tone frequency to one end of it and then put a microphone on the other end of it while the board is suspended uh, off the floor with a two-inch pyramid foam? All right, let's get to the results here. Four different types of wood, all facing the exact same laboratory conditions. We applied a transducer to one end of the board, applying a pure tone sine wave at 250 hertz. On the far end of the board, inside this laboratory ISO booth, which had a noise floor that we recorded around 30 dB, which is exceptionally quiet. If I go into the quietest place in this studio, the best I can achieve is about 38 dB. So this is a, quite a magnitude quieter than that. We ran one of her testing microphones at the far end of the board and recorded what the wood was actually doing. While it's being vibrated with a pure sine wave at the opposite end of the board, the board was suspended up off the floor on two-inch pyramid foam so that the vibration of the floor could not possibly have an impact on it. Here are the results. Here's all four of the woods. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. And let me walk you through back from wood one again. You can see where we were applying the 250 hertz signal, and that comes across as a point. We also see that there's this, the next peak above that happens around 750 hertz. And beyond that, there's a fair amount of harmonic activity coming out, but a pretty big jump from 250 up to 750. And that was a three to one ratio and a pretty hot peak there. Here's wood number two. Again, you see the initial signal applied at 250 hertz. And again, very little activity, and we see a secondary peak again happening around 750 hertz. But look above that, nearly silent, especially above uh, 4K into 8K. And let's compare that to wood number one again real quick for the difference. The two main peaks were nearly identical. I, I think in wood number one here, we see the peak at 750 hertz is a little bit more prominent than in wood two, which is here. Okay, let's take a look at wood three. Wood three. This is the first time that we're seeing some real evidence of activity around 500 hertz. This is a two to one ratio 
off of the input frequency of 250. Again, let me bring you back to wood number two. Keep your eye on the 500 hertz. Nearly non-existent, but, you're, but yet here it is. And again, that additional peak at 750 hertz and a couple small peaks, but nothing like what we saw in wood one. Wood one had nothing at 500, a big peak around 750, and almost a wash of harmonics higher than that. Fascinating. Okay, let's get over to wood four, and we'll go in order. Here's wood one. Here's wood two. Almost nothing at 500 hertz. Wood three. There's that spike at 500, and we are still seeing that predominant peak at 750. And a couple pretty defined small peaks above that. Here's wood four. 500 hertz has been greatly reduced. All three boards seem to have kind of a preferential treatment around that 750 hertz mark. Okay, let me take you through them one more time. Wood one. Wood two. Wood three. And wood four. We saw some differences in the FFT. Can you tell us what the FFT is? So uh, that's a fast Fourier transform. And a fast Fourier transform is like mathematical filters. And that's how it picks out, uh, measures different frequencies. So it does a frequency analysis, a sample over time. So you could find the frequency composition of sound. Now we input, say a source into a, a piece of wood at 250 hertz. Uh, the wave that we're putting in uh, that was 70 dB, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, would you consider that to be a sine wave that you put in, in other words, free of harmonics? Yes. So what we do when we use our transducer, we use um, we actually use a bone oscillator we use for, for bone conduction to test human hearing. Let me just interrupt and say, ew. <laughs> So we place it on the skull and it, it vibrates at a certain frequency and the frequencies are calibrated to be pure tones. So we can measure um, a response to a pure tone at 1000 hertz or 2000 hertz or 4000 hertz. Now we took a brief look at the FFT captures from this experiment and we did see that there were some harmonics overlaid on top of what really should have been a pure tone. and. If we see some differences from one species of wood to another species of wood in terms of how loud or how distantly spaced those harmonics were, in this scientific lab experiment here, do you think that there's any possible way that those differences that we saw could be attributed to anything other than the species of wood? As long as we have a quiet environment and a controlled environment, it should, the responses should be just from the resonance frequencies of the wood. Now, this laboratory, these are regulated. You have a minimum uh, recommended dB or allowable dP, sorry, dB in that room that we were using, which I believe they set a minimum for you at 40 dB. Yes. We measured that room at 32 dB. So kudos to your room builder. <laughs> okay. What else do you think you can add that we should possibly be considering as musicians, being that you're a musician, you choose drums that are made out of different types of wood. And let me ask you, do you hear a difference between say a birch drum and a maple drum personally? Absolutely. So um, there are different woods that are chosen for different instruments. And um, the drum set that I use is uh, maple. So it's made of seven layers of, of maple wood. But what does that mean for us as guitar players? Well, when we pluck a string, it's vibrating. And that vibration is getting transferred into whatever wood we're using to build our guitars with. That's really not different than using a transducer to force a vibration into wood at a very specific tone or a very specific pitch, like tuning a string. Since a guitar has multiple strings on it, 
a variety of things could happen. But if we isolate just one frequency and look at the behavior of the wood, and in our cases we're seeing some radical differences, something has to happen whenever a vibration gets put into a piece of wood. In part three, we're going to see what that actually means in terms of sound when we do the lab experiment that Dave Church helped us set up back in episode one, which I will link below, and I hope that you watch. And please click subscribe uh, so you get notifications. Click the little bell. And part three is coming out in about 10 days. This is a slow process that we're making sure the science is completely sorted to the best of our abilities so that we can come up with the answer. Does it make a difference what kind of wood your guitar is made out of? From what we're seeing on these charts, the expectation is it should be audible, but we will know for sure. Stay tuned. And as always, please pop over to our Facebook group, Recording Tips where the videos that we shoot for this channel often parallel the discussions that we're having in that group, including this one. You can come talk to us about it any time that you want. Uh, if you see any flaws or anything and want to say something about the science or anything, leave a comment. I generally try to get back to everybody. Anyway, we got a lot of work to do, and in this case, more than ever. Well, let's get to it.